Okay, let's work through this example of how we would determine a monthly house payment. We're going to answer a couple other questions as well. Now, you see the main question right here. Maybe I can center that a little bit better. Okay, a person wants to buy a house. Total fixed cost, uh, total fixed price for the house is 275000 The person will put a down payment of 20%. The interest rate is 5.1% fixed for 30-year term. How much down payment will the person put down? What's the monthly payment? And how much of total interest will the person pay over 30 years? Now, here's some hints. The present value would be equal to 275000 the fixed payment, times 1 minus 20%, because we're putting 20% down. The interest rate given is 5.1%. That's an annual rate. Number of periods would be 30 years times 12 months, whatever that is. And then we have to calculate the payment. We've got to calculate a couple other things as well. All right, if we take the purchase price at 275000 subtract the down payment. Now, how did I get that? I'll hit the F2. I said equal 275000 times 20%. That gives me 55000 so we've answered how much the down payment will be. Then if we subtract one from the other, we'll get 220000 But, of course, you could calculate that directly by taking 275000 times 1 minus 20%. Okay? Now, that's probably easier in Excel just to subtract one from the other. But, you see, they both get you the same answer. Okay? Now, the interest rate, you've got to take the interest, the annual interest rate and divide it by 12. So, 5.1% divided by 12 get you the interest rate. The number of periods is 30 years with 12 months per year. That gives you 360. All right, now to calculate the payment, you're going to use Excel's um, payment function. And I've worked it ahead of time, but how you, how you would do that is you call up the payment. Here, why don't I just work it for you? Equal PMT hit the left parenthesis, then I usually come up and hit this insert function button, calls this up, and then I start to put it in the information in. Well, what's the rate? The rate is given right there. That's the monthly rate, since we're calculating a monthly payment. The number of periods, given right there in cell D19, rate was in D18. Okay, present value is the 220,000. Now, if I leave that as a positive number, it's going to come up with a payment that's negative. And the reason for that is it's the way Excel and financial calculators work. They think about cash flow in terms of positive and negative. Positive being a positive cash flow, negative being a negative cash flow. But I want the answer to come back as a positive number. So what I do is I treat the present value as if we're giving up the use of 220,000 to come up with a positive payment. Well, I'll tell you what, to keep from confusing you, let's just uh, calculate this the regular way. There's 119449. That says for us to have a house that's worth 220000 or excuse me, a loan that's worth 220000 and given these factors for the interest and rates and number of periods, the payment would be 119449. But of course, I want to see the payment as a positive number, so I either can put a negative in front of the formula or switch switch the present value so I'll make that a negative and then it gives me a positive payment number okay then the last thing I have to calculate is the cumulative interest payment and Excel has a function called cum IPMT that you can when I hit the F2 you can see it here or you can see it up here let me call that up again you could put these in individually so equals cum IP PMT, hit the left parentheses, then call it up and start putting in the factors. Well, the rate is given in cell, uh, what is that, D18 is 0 0.00425 or 0.425%. Number of periods given in cell D19, uh, that's 360. The payment amount we've, uh, excuse me, the, the present value is D17, right, which is right there. 220,000. Now, I don't want to put it in twice. Um, and then we put in the starting period and the ending period. And when you're done, it will give you a negative answer. So what you see here is I put a negative right before the formula to change the sign. 
And again, the reason why it's giving you a negative answer is it's assuming that's the payments you're going to make. It's an outflow, therefore it's negative. But I want this formula to return a positive number, so I put a negative before the sign. Okay, and that's my approach to solving this problem. Again, you hit the F2, you can see the formulas that are being used and where they're referenced. And you can do that for really any cell. There's the payment. There's the cumulative interest payment over the entire life of this loan.